7.05, we're back in open session. Item number 14. Second reading and adoption on Ordinance 186, Amendment 6, an ordinance of the City of Socorro, Texas, changing Sections 2, Civil Service Commission functions, duties, procedures, and rules, and Section 3, Division of the Civil Service. Madam Mayor, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion at this time to have to instruct staff to review uh, the the ordinance and to come back uh, with any changes if necessary. Second. Second. Sorry. René Rodriguez is absent. Chief Reno Yes. Ralph Duran? Yes. Victor Perry? Aye. And Ivan Colón Villalobos? Yes. Going back to presentation. Item number five, presentation from Roberto Ransom, Operations Director of the Hunt Institute for Global Competitiveness, University of Texas. Um, Mr. Ransom couldn't be here today, so at this time I'd like to, if anybody would entertain a motion to postpone for the next meeting. Motion to postpone to the next meeting. Second. Rene Rodriguez is absent, Chief Renovati. Yes. Ralph Yes. Victor Perry. Aye. Yes. Item number six, presentation by city manager regarding July's 2018 monthly report. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm going to provide you the um, highlights for the month of July 2018 for the departments. Municipal Courts Department collected $80,092 in the month of July, received 378 citations from Socorro PD, 64 citations from the Department of Public Safety, and 59 ordinance violations. Our HR department celebrated July's birthdays and anniversaries on August 10th. Employees of the month was Myrna Workman. There was no civil service meeting for the month of July. There was two separations, one public work supervisor and one police officer. There was three new hires in the month of July, which was Aurora Molina as a dispatcher, Alejandra Valadez, grants coordinator, Maria Cobos, part-time labor. Our Parks and Public Works Department uh, cleaned Bovee Lateral on City's right-of-way, repaired sinkhole on Bovee Road, the milling, paving, striping, ADA ramping, trenching, and shoulder work of Buford Road was, <laughs> was completed. Uh, the flashers were programmed for all schools in the city, throughout the city. Pothole repairs on Bovey, Vineyard, and Peters, and continue to maintain, mow, and groom all city parks and ponding areas. And uh, just as a highlight for the month of August, we do have a new Public Works Director, Joel Gonzalez, and Public Works Supervisor, Alejandro Bala uh, Alvarez. Our police department received 2,100, uh, I'm sorry, 2,367 calls for service in the month of July. And our officers, uh, to keep them in compliance with certification of TICOS, uh, continue to attend trainings. Our city clerk department conducted and prepared minutes for two regular meetings on July 5th and July 19th, received 38 open records requests and responded to 32, and prepared two publications. Planning and Zoning Department total collected for the month was $18,988, issued 109 permits, 37 registrations, 12 applications, and eight letters. Recreations Department um, did Movies Under the Stars, Coco, and Cars. They had a Texas Tech medical student vis visit and toured the city, prepared for back to school event, attended the local mitigation planning workshop, and the total visitors for Rio Vista were 1,002, and total for Chayapodaca were 304. Our IT department helped 
uh, repair 911 lines phone system, installed and configured new switch at the Park and Public Works yard to increase network access and assisted the Parks and Public Works Department's daily operations. Our grants department for July um, had logged in 178 hours of service, had a week-long week STEM for children. Um, it was a science camp that was provided to students. There was a total of 18 students that attended. Uh, researching and data analysis on economic development, exploring the feasibility of implementing a specific economic development, such as an enterprise zone program. Those are the highlights for the department. I don't know if you have any questions? Concerns? No? Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to consent agenda, do we have a motion? Motion to approve agenda. Second. Rene Rodriguez is absent. Cesar Nevada? Yes. Ralph Duran? Yes. Victor Perez? Aye. Ivan Colón Villalobos? Yes. Item number eight, public hearing on the City of Socorro's property tax rate of 0.752457 for fiscal year 2019. 11 public hearing is now open. I'm wondering what the city has done to tighten and lower the city budget. Where have cuts been made uh, for the budget to, to be lowered? Have we uh, reduced paper cost? I see a lot of papers on your desks. A lot of copies made. Um, I'm just wondering what reductions we've done before trying to increase the budget what have we done to try to lower our cost as a city? Also, how can we be assured that the revenue that is going to come from this tax rate increase will be used to hire the much needed positions that I'm pretty sure are the reasons why you're giving constituents as to why the tax increase is needed? Whether it's code enforcers, officers, uh, park laborers, um, everything that's always said during the meetings that I've listened to that is mostly what Mr. Rodriguez says, fortunately he's not here, that's what's needed for the city. How can we be assured that that money is actually gonna be directed towards that? Um, is the budget going to reflect that that's where the money is going to? Um, is it just gonna be a free for all and if something comes up, um, the budget will be rerouted to something else? I'm just curious as a constituent, because it doesn't, uh, makes sense to not have a plan moving forward. And so I'm just hoping that the city does have a plan and I'm hoping that we're still making efforts whether or not this increase happens to lower our cost, uh, whether it's at an office, at the office level, at the labor uh, level, uh, renewable energy. Um, so, many, so many revenues, avenues that we can try to lower our cost to try to make our budget better. I'm just wondering what the city is doing to do that. Thank you. Seven fourteen. Public hearing is now closed. Item number nine. Public hearing on an ordinance of the City of Socorro, Texas, amending Chapter Two, Article Four, Division Eight of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Socorro, Texas, to separate the membership of the Planning and Zoning Commission from the membership of the Buildings and Standards Commission. Seven fourteen. Public hearing is now open. Seven fifteen. public hearing is now closed. Item number 10, second reading and adoption of an ordinance of the City of Socorro, Texas, amending Chapter 2, Article 4, Division 8 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Socorro, Texas, to separate the membership of the Planning and Zoning Commission from the membership of the Buildings and Standards Commission.
Texas is separated under the Federal Plan and Zoning Commission from membership of the Governing Standing Commission. Second. Senator Rodriguez is absent. Yes, Senator Barry? Yes. Ralph Duran? Yes. Victor Perry? Aye. Ivan Colon Villalobos? Yes. Item number 11, public hearing of an ordinance of the City of Socorro, Texas, amending Chapter 6, Article 4 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Socorro, Texas, to make City Council the final authority on substandard structures and recent cases. Mm -hmm. 716, public hearing is now open. Seven sixteen public hearing is now closed. Item number 12, second reading and adoption of an ordinance of the City of Socorro, Texas, amending Chapter 6, Article 4 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Socorro, Texas, to make City Council the final authority on substandard structures and recent cases. I'd like to move, go ahead and make a motion, Madam Mayor, uh, to adopt the ordinance of the City of Socorro, Texas, amending Chapter 6, Article 4 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Socorro, Texas, to make City Council the final authority on substandard structures and nuisance cases. Second. Senator Rodriguez is absent. Si Senator Barry? Yes. Ralph Duran? Yes. Victor Perez? Aye. Ivan Colon Villalobos? Yes. Item number 15, introduction, first reading, and calling for a public hearing of an ordinance an ordinance for the proposed amendment to the City of Socorro Master Plan and rezoning of Tract 8B, Block 17, Socorro Grant from R1, Single Family Residential, to R2, Medium Density Residential for a quadruplex. Mayor. Item 15 through the 19th, they're just introductions. We will have the public hearing at the next meeting. Okay. Do you have any motions? Motion to have an introduction, first reading, and, and call for a public hearing on the uh, proposed amendment to the City of Socorro Master Plan, rezoning, rezoning Tract 8B, Block 17, Socorro Grant, from R1, single family, to R2, medium density residential, for a quad. Second. Yes. Yes. Uh, item number 16, introduction, first reading and calling for a public hearing of an ordinance, an ordinance for the proposed rezoning of a portion of Tract 15, Block 4, Socorro Grant, Lots 1-11, Block 2, East Lake Valley Subdivision for a commercial development. Motion to approve. Um, no, no. Okay, we can do that. Okay. Uh, motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. <laughs> yeah, you didn't ask me yesterday. So okay. Well, I wasn't sure. <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. Item number 17. Introduction, first reading, and calling for a public hearing of an ordinance, an ordinance for the proposed rezoning of tracks 2A, 2A1, and 2A3, Block 28, Socorro Grant from A1, Agricultural to RE, Rural Estates for a Subdivision Plan. Motion for introduction and first reading and calling for a public hearing on said uh, area. Second. Yes. 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 Item number 18, introduction, first reading and calling for a public hearing of an ordinance, an ordinance for the proposed amendment to the City of Socorro Master Plan and rezoning of Lot 19, Block 4, Mary Lou Park at 10724 Lydia Road from R1, single family residential to R2, medium density residential for a multifamily complex. Motion to approve. Second. 
Yes. 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 Item number 19, introduction, first reading and calling for a public hearing of an ordinance, an ordinance for the proposed amendment to the City of Socorro Master Plan and the proposed rezoning of Track 12, Block 18, Socorro Grant 10277 Socorro Road from R1, single family residential to C2, general commercial for a business office and warehouse. Motion for the introduction, first reading, calling for hearing on said area. Second. Yes. 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 Item number 21, discussion and action of approval request to waive the event permit fee for the annual homecoming parade of Socorro High School. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Yes. 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 Item number 22, Discussion and action of approval request for the conditional use permit for a retail shopping center pursuant to section 46-452 section 4 to allow uses permitted or conditional in the C2 general commercial zone on Lee Clark survey 293 ABST 6257 track 6A on 1120 Horizon Boulevard to allow a commercial shopping center. Second. Uh, good evening, Michael Mina. I'm the city planner. Um, and so what I'd like to do right now, I wanted to present myself. This is the first city council meeting. Um, I have been working diligently over the last week. This is my second week. Uh, so there's a learning curve there. So what I would like to do is uh, have Mr. Terrazas uh, speak on the case and actually all the other cases up to number 25. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is a conditional use permit request. Um, this property is located at 1120 Horizon Boulevard to allow a commercial shopping center. This property is zoned M1 light industrial under section 452, it says that it requires a conditional use permit in order to operate as commercial. This property is right there. They're building a warehouse and an office space. And right here where you see these uh, marks, this is where they're proposing a commercial shopping center because the property is classified industrial, that's why they're asking for the conditional use permit so they can build the shopping center. Mr. Duran. Uh, Joe, <coughs> there was um, some flooding issues, I think a couple of years ago with this subdivision or this uh, commercial park. Did they take care of their um, ponding? Yes, sir, they created a pond right here in the back of the property. They graded the entire lot they are having minor flooding issues that are being addressed by the neighbors. The, there's a minor stream of water that flows this way, um, but they're uh, already taking care of it. On their, in their property, they already graded the land into this pond over here in the back. And the first time that they came into our office, they wanted to build a pond and start draining water into the arroyo. They were not allowed to do that. That's why they moved the pond over here. Because I remember a few years ago, didn't that pond overflow and flood part of the um, uh, trailer park? No, sir. That's a different area. It's outside the okay. The city limit. Mr. Pena? Is that the best place for that pond? Yes, sir. So the shopping center they're proposing is going to be over here closer to uh, Horizon. They are, they, right now they do have a case with the Board of Adjustments. They're asking for a variance to build the shopping center closer to the roadway. Um, th it, it still hasn't been approved, but the uh, land use, this is what we're asking for, or they're asking for tonight. Ms. Elavos? How much of that land is going to be paved 
and, and uh, how much of it is going to state um, as is. And if it is paved and as is, um, the grading of it, will it change? And if, are they responsible to continue the grading where it does not change? Correct. The yes, uh, they already uh, did the grading that they, they're gonna do on the property. That according to them, they're gonna pave about 60% of the lot. Because they're also, not only they, they wanna, not only do they wanna use the commercial space in the front, they also wanna have a trucking company business right here in the back. That's the purpose of having the warehouse. But everything in the back, most of the space is gonna be used for the large vehicles, the trucks. So, so they must, if they keep it as is with dirt, they must con uh, continue to, um, because when it rains, that, that uh, dirt sticks. No, that dirt is gonna be paved. Uh, about más o menos up to here. From horizon to there? Yes, ma'am. And, and what's gonna happen to that dirt in the back? That dirt is not gonna be moved any anymore. That's the way <coughs> it's gonna be designed. That's the way they're proposing their design. Rains will not move that, shift that dirt? No, ma'am. They haven't shown a, any uh, grading or any other proposed uh, improvements in the back. They, are, uh, they already have some flumes where the water is gonna be draining into the ponds. That's why the dirt is not supposed to move. Any questions? Yes. Dr. Yes. Yes. Item number 23, discussion and action to deny the proposed amendment to the City of Socorro Master Plan and the proposed rezoning of Track 12, Block 18, Socorro Grant 10277, Socorro Road, from R1, single family residential to C2, general commercial for a business office and warehouse. Would somebody entertain a motion to delete? We've already uh, introduced it on item 19. Motion to delete. Second. Yes. 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 Item number 24, discussion and action to approve request a preliminary plat for Flor, Flor del Rio replat A, being a replat of lot one, block 15, Flor del Rio, located at 11621 Flor Marsha. Second. Yes. 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 Item number 25. Discussion and action on the preliminary plat approval for Grijalva via subdivision being a portion of tracks 2A, 2A1, and 2A3, block 28, Socorro Grant. Motion to approve. Question. <coughs> Second. Mayor and Council, um, this application, the, the applicant requested that we delete their application. Uh, the Plan and Zoning Commission recommended to deny it but the applicant doesn't want to file the subdivision plat anymore. They're asking for us to just delete it. Really? Ms. Alavas? What, what's the purpose that um, we, or, or the board would not allow them to, to uh, That was a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, that we presented an email from the applicant where they're asking for us to delete the application. They don't wanna pursue the subdivision. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for that is because they, some of the recommendations that the Planning and Zoning Commission imposed were out of their budget. They cannot afford to pave any roadways. So they don't wanna go, they, they don't wanna move forward with the application anymore. So you wanna have a subdivision with concrete roads? 
they wanted to uh, create a, a small subdivision or a minor plat. But at this point, with all the conditions that were imposed or they were asking, uh, they can't afford to do it. Wow. Did they make any reference to whether they were at one point coming back with it or coming back with something else? No, they just asked us to delete it, to just cancel the whole thing. And were they asking for an on-site, at one point, on-site funding or, or own, owner? They were asking for on-site funding, yes, ma'am. To amend your motion? Motion to delete. Second. Rodriguez yes. Ustacha, Chico Navarro? Yes. Ralph Yes. Victor Perez? Aye. Ivan Colon Villalobos? Yes. Item number 26. Discussion on action to announce the date on which City Council would take final action on the tax rate on the 2019 municipal budget. Mayor, we're uh, asking for September 13, 2017, be the day that we adopt our budget. 2018. Motion to accept September 13, uh, 2018, as the uh, date with which City Council will take final action on the tax rate for 2019. Second. Ms. Villalobos? Um, since it says 2017, we're okay? We're That's why we're making it part of the motion. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Okay. Yes. 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 Item number 27, presentation and discussion regarding tax rate calculations, revenues, and expenditures for the City of Socorro's proposed budget for fiscal year 2019. Mayor and Council, we included in your uh, in your uh, okay. materials uh, was the adjusted budget from from our previous discussions. Just to, to hit on the highlights, we are using the rollback rate in calculating the property tax revenue for the fiscal year 2019, uh, which provided an increase of about two hundred and forty-five thousand dollars, which in relative terms is $22 more a year for a property of about $90,000. That's what the increase uh, redounds to. Included in, in, the, uh, in the budget itself, there is a 2% COLA. If you look closely, because yeah, again, the, the font's really small, but if you look closely on the worksheets for the, uh, for the employees, you can see a column added at the very end on the right side uh, for the COLA, the 2%, the we applied it to some of the employees, not all of the employees, depending on whether or not they've been there a while or in their particular category, like the city manager doesn't get the 2% because she has a separate contract. We made absolutely no changes to the benefits uh, based on uh, our, our um, feeling that, that the uh, the benefits would come in about what they are now, and and from what we've seen, uh, that that may be a good, yes. Mr. Perez, uh, on the COLA, uh, yes. is there a a baseline or a defendable way of how this entire was uh, uh, calculated? Arrived at? Yes, uh, we went through the Social Security Administration, and they have a two percent cost of living increase. Okay. Is that what you? receive the increase because uh, maybe I, I misunderstood it. It seemed like some yes, some no in terms of who's going to receive the increase. And so... Well, I if, if they were just recently hired? What, what does recently mean? Is that, that's well, if they're in their six-month probationary period, they wouldn't qualify for the 2% cost of living. And also the city manager does not qualify for the cost of living. I, I just want to make sure that we have that in public. 
Yes. Okay. But then it's not that we're going through and just, oh, no, no. It, you get a raise and you get a raise and you don't. No, if, if they're on their probationary <laughs> period, that they don't get the cost of living. Okay. Also included in the budget that has not been changed since our last discussion are all the items in the wish list. Okay, so th if you look at the, the, the combined, that includes everything that was on the wish list for both, uh, I be believe the, the wish list uh, was mostly concerned with the police uh, and with some equipment, equipment and also with um, parks and public works, also with, with uh, some equipment that uh, is needed to, to help them be more efficient. Also, can I? Mr. Perez? A and I know I'm, I'm looking to, let's not call it a wish list because that kind of sends the wrong message to the voters that we're just willy nilly. Uh, wishing for stuff. Getting, yeah, wishing or identifying things. I'd rather, uh, you know, call it maybe identified needs or, you know, something, something that's more a little bit more technical. Because yes. when you have a wish list, that's, that kind of still has a, a bad connotation. That's <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm open to whatever you want to call it. What do you want to call it? <laughs> uh, identified needs. Or the identified needs list. Sure. It's going to take a little bit longer, but can we highlight in a different color next time? The, the, I, well, I guess it's going to say now identified needs versus versus what we were looking at the, the, the last time we met. Does that make sense? Never mind. <coughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see the new name on it, and then we can identify it ourselves. Okay. Okay. And that's a cost savings. I'm sorry? That's a cost savings for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the bottom line uh, of the budget, especially uh, for the m and I think all the others are, are gonna be uh, essentially um, whatever we receive we will spend, or actually it's the reverse, whatever we spend we'll receive. Um, but we're still showing that we're going to be digging into the reserves approximately $841,000. Again, with the identified needs lists, what that does is that it gives us the opportunity to purchase these things in the fiscal year. However, if things change, you know, it, it, we, we don't have to right. purchase these things. We're not required to spend that money. And so in, in, the, in the past few years, we've actually come in well under budget, and we expect to, that to continue. Okay. It's, just, it's just giving us an opportunity uh, to spend if, if it's, if it's uh, um, to our benefit. If it continues to become, a, if it continues to be a priority. Yes, yes. Any questions? But we haven't changed anything from our last workshop. We pretty much left everything the same. Mr. Perez? No? Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. We don't need a motion because it's just a presentation and discussion item. Item number 28. Discussion and action to approve a proposed interlocal agreement with the County of El Paso Ambulance Services. We met with our county judge and we're waiting a response so we can postpone until we have a response from county. So motion to postpone at this time. Do you Second. Have we can postpone until we receive the interlocal agreement uh, from them. All right, so we'll, uh, I'll then have a motion to we'll postpone until we receive Second. Yes. 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 Item number 29, 
Discussion and action on status on Chief of Police requesting to continue recruitment. I have very sad news. Our um, candidate for the Chief of Police position, we received a letter that she's declining the position due to a uh, undesirable health uh, condition that just arose and, and uh, she needs to take care of her health before she can uh, move anywhere. So we are asking council um, if, if we can start the recruitment starting tomorrow. Our brochure is ready to go. Um, it was an unfortunate, uh, she seems very excited and, and I do really think that it, it was because of our process. Right? Remember, we, we offered the position contingent upon she meets all the requirements to come work with us. And I think something surfaced and um, that is not allowing her to come work for the city of Socorro. So, so uh, let me get into uh, reopening the process for the chief of police. Second. Do we have a visit to Jackson, Chief Sandoval? Yes. Welcome. Yes. Yes. Item number 30, discussion on action on requesting HP Communication Incorporated to relocate their equipment from City's right of way located at 151 South Moon Road to the proposed location. Motion to approve. Actually, we have an update. Yes. Okay, so uh, we did a little bit of research. The attorney came back, and there is ways that we can request written notices, but there's things that we have to identify and ask counsel, since you are the policymakers, how you want to proceed. Um, the issues that need to be addressed is what type of notice would be required? Is it a handbill, written notice to the property, property owner, other? Who would receive the notice? The immediately adjacent property owners, tenants, those within a certain distance of the work area or other? Who would give the notice? The city or the party performing the work? and what penalty, if any, for failure to provide? Exemptions for emergency work or other exceptions? So there's things that need to be taken into account before creating a, a I guess, a policy for installing utilities on cities right away. And just as an update, Mr. Perez, is um, there was an equipment that was placed on cities right away, and some of the residents were complaining because they didn't want it in front of their property, they felt that in a fur uh, further out, they could have this equipment could have been placed, um, but nobody notified them. Okay, uh, we did go back, and there's a Texas Texas law that protects these utility companies and cities right away are used for utility easements for the betterment of the community. Um, so, council directed staff and Ms. Colon Villalobos, we met today. I had posed the question to the attorney to see if, if we can impose uh, the notice to be sent out by the utility company. And, and those were the questions that came back to us for approval. I have sent out an email to the utility company and asking them um, to relocate. If not, what is the process and what is the cost associated with that? That way we can get more information and bring it back to council. Can we just um, postpone to the next meeting? I'm sorry? Should, should, can we postpone to the next meeting? Craig, just uh, provide us some direction of, of the questions that were asked mm -hmm. on how you want us to proceed. I did, I did do a little research, um, and the notices are very vague and just letting them know we're working on this area from this day to this day. Uh, this equipment is coming up, but that's pretty much as much as the notices that I've researched online. So 
I don't know if that's something that, or if you want to propose a. Well, I think that would notify them, and they it would alert them that something's happening. And if they're if, if it's that important to them, then they'll you know communicate it with whoever the letter is addressed from. Um, if Correct. I guess the only question that I have is that by the time the notice is sent, is because the permit has already been issued. Okay, so if the permit has already been issued, the utility company has already have the authority to install. So I think it's just going to create more friction for council because they're going to call their elected officials and the permit has already been issued. I don't know if there's anything that you would like to add. We've had several discussions. Michael Mina, the city planner. So I think with regard to when it comes to utility location, as I understand it, is that the state has already set forth some decisions in allowing the utility companies of rights of way. So one of the things that we were talking about is, uh, I've been examining over the last week the comprehensive plan. There's been some recommendations uh, that haven't gone forward since the council adopted the plan. One of those things is to identify a strategic plan. Um, and that would start at the neighborhood level and then ultimately rise to a regional level to ensure that there's nexus of the need that is being prescribed by this body. The utility location and things of that nature would become a function of that as well. There's elements out there that qualify for ser several type of federal funding. And so the, those are the discussions that I was having with the city manager. And so at what point does the uh, safety of the residents uh, becomes an issue? In this case, this is the issue, and there was another spot just, you know, a couple of feet away that would have been perfect. They're not saying no. They're just saying, had they notified us, we would have said, yeah, right here, it's perfect. It doesn't, you know, it's not in the way. They can see. And certainly, if you look at the, the rock wall, it goes, it goes this way. So where they're saying, it, it would have been that uh, contraption or box or holes or whatever would have been it a little bit more versus they're right in the path of you if you look at them they're right in the path of um of uh, moon and if you're driving fast or if you're not you know watching what you're doing it curves and it's right at the curve and that's why they put those big big uh, cement poles in front of it uh to protect the the, the box obviously they knew that it could potentially be hit it's too close to the road uh, the road is very narrow, and the the elderly couple that lives there is having a hard time pulling in and out of their, their driveway. Right. I, I guess what I would say is that when it comes to utility companies and the things that are granted by the state legislators, it gives them primacy. And so ultimately is that if they're going to make the location and have utilities there, uh, they have the absolute right to do that. One thing that we're examining is how we are examining the development of subdivisions, how we plan them and how the utilities go in. So those are the things that we need to, as a community, understand what the priority is, because you all can exact designing when it comes to subdivision and those locations. But I think that for the most part is that safety should be at the forefront. Right. I think that as we start to examine the comprehensive plan and develop this 10 year strategic plan is to address those issues, which will also require us to make changes to the code. I just think that at this time we should delete this item. We should allow Mr. Medina to more days on the job to propose those changes. I think to prevent future issues like this in the future. But I think that the state legislator does give the right to the utilities and we shouldn't enforce um, additional requests than the state legislator does on a local level. And we have already asked that utility company to relocate. So let's see what they respond and then we'll bring it back to council if there's a cost associated with it. And okay. So you can help those uh, residents that you're right and and i completely completely agree but when there's a si safety issue of one of our residents there has to be an exception to the rule so and, and i'm sure it's not one size fits all mr perez
Okay, welcome. Any motion? To think if, if I if I if we deny it, we, we can still bring it back. We can s what do you think would be best right now, Jim, to do to postpone it, deny it? Um, and either way, it can be brought back. to delete. Second. Do I have any other discussion? Is there anybody? Yes. Russell? Yes. Mr. Fair? I don't like it this time. <laughs> yes. Do we have anything for item 31 and 32? Come here. Motion to delete item number 31 and 32. And 33. Second. Yes. 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 Second. Yes. 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 Hey, you gotta take care of the city. It's a tough job, somebody you gotta do it. Huh? Yeah, you know when I heard that? This is amazing. Oh, and you forgot. Well, thank God. Yes, um, Mr. Nevada, did you check your area? Was, were you okay? Yes? We'll continue. No, no, and I said, if you had a complaint, I know he would respond right away. <laughs> 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 